current mirror. Current mirror is very important. Why it is important? We talked about the current source already, right? Current source is what? Current source is very expensive because an ideal current source, right? We talked about that before. An ideal current source is uh, insensitive to many things, right? Anything you can say. Can you give me some example? Temperature, right? I want you to give the same current whether I use it in California or in North Pole, right? Voltage across it. Impedance. Impedance, whatever, right? Impedance uh, of the loading, right? I mean, noise, yeah. Whatever you can say will be correct, right? And maybe fabrication variation right because on the same wafer i'm producing thousands of uh, chips right how uh there there will be a lot of variation and i want them to all to give me the same current source right so to do this is possible need a lot of engineering right it needs a lot of engineering time and also the area real estate right? you occupy a lot of area to make a good current source but in a circuit you see that every amplifier need a current source right and you have tons of amplifier in your circuit and not just the amplifier you need to buy other things also like adc dac or whatever so it's impossible for you to make this expensive current source Right? And because of that, and let me show you again just uh, as a, this is V, this is I, I want to have a constant current, which we discussed earlier, right? This is I, and this is V, insensitive to the voltage. So instead of that, right, we want to have something called current mirror that can copy this golden standard to every places in the uh, uh, along the uh, uh, in the circuit, like in the old time, how they define the length of one meter in SI unit, they actually have a I don't know a a alloy a alloy or a, a metal alloy in Paris, and they need to keep it un under certain uh, humidity, a certain pressure, and then they define that one as one meter. And then in principle, if you want to define a meter, you actually need to compare to that golden standard. And then you maybe bring back to US, right? things is going to shrink or whatever. Now people use atomic claw or whatever, right, to do the, those stuff. This is not what it is doing, right? It is very expensive, this one. Spend a lot of engineering time, a lot of area. I assume you are able to do this current source. And the only current source we have done, the best current source we have done so far is only just this, this one. This is the best we will do in this class. If you go to E223, you will spend a lot of time just to design a good current source. Right? They have a bunch of theory about this. So assume we do get a good current source. Here we want to study, can we copy this current source to somewhere? Of course, this copy action needs to be simple and also insensitive to variation, right? Otherwise, that's uh, meaningless. So, but this is the idea of constructing a current mirror. So how do we do that? This is an idea, Morse current mirror. So I have a current source. Let me think of a circuit so that it will copy to this transistor and then you have a current here. So what do they do is this. Do you remember what type of circuit is this? 
the IO connector, right? So what it does is that it converts the current source, I mean the reference, right? You have a very good current to voltage X through this dial connector circuit. Now, if I have a voltage, it's very easy to copy. I just have a wire. I can copy the voltage to anywhere, as long as I don't have current flowing through, right? And of course, you need to think about the response time. Your wire cannot be too long, because uh, if there's any fluctuation, you want to uh, quickly uh, like start up the circuit. Right? When you start up the circuit, it may take a long time to charge up the current, then your, your circuit is not going to be useful. Right, so so of course there's some constraint, but in ideal case, I can copy the voltage to tons of loading, right? Because the voltage is not going to change, right? I just have a wire connect to each of you, then my potential will be the same as uh, each of you, right? Because it's on parallel. Right? Make sense, right? So you convert the reference current to voltage, and then that voltage is used to bias the M1, and then this Vx, right, is converted the to I copy at M1. Is this okay? Just an overview. Do you see this action? A easy way to confirm your understanding is this. Can this one copy current from left to right? Of course, I say it is bad, right? I mean, it doesn't work, but why it doesn't work? Yeah. Your VX has nothing to do with this, right? It's just, again, like the switching example of the light, right? Uh, I cannot change the switch through by doing something to the light bulb. Right here, a dial connector means I have a mechanism to control the switch, right? Through this dial connector, but this is not going to work. You have current, right? I don't know how the current go where it goes, but it never affect the X, right? And as a result, you cannot copy any current. Okay. So finally, let's look at the um, relationship between. I think this is the last slide. The relationship between the I copy and the I ref, why they work, okay? First of all, we assume they are in saturation. You definitely need to assume they are in saturation. Although this is a DC signal, the reason it needs to be in saturation will be very clear. First one is I ref. The current, yeah, it's ID, very good. I, we missed the ID ref. I don't want to write it again. What is the equation? Do you remember? W on L, uh, yeah, B log 0.5, yes, you're right. W on L, let me do W on L first. W on L of M ref, right? Times mu C ox divided by two times V G S minus V T square. What else? Channel length modulation. Is this okay? How about I copy? What is this? Same. M1 W on L. Mu C os divided by two. Do you know why they are the same mu C os divided by two? Because they are same process. You are right, both N MOS, right? We try to make them the same. And from here you see that there can be a problem if there's some variation between the gate oxide thickness of these two, I won't be able to copy easily. 
And that's why in the layouts, they try to do some interdigital layout or whatever, so they, they share the same variation. So you also see that you cannot put these two transistors really far away. Now I told you that I can copy easy, but no, if I put it far away, C aux and C aux might not be the same. Okay. And current again is VGS minus VT, one plus lambda VDS. But we need to be careful. What is VGS for the IREF? What's the VGS? What is that? I mean, how do we call it in this figure? We what? Which terminal? Huh? Huh? We X? Yeah, we X. That's why uh, uh, my question is not good. Yeah, we X minus V T, right? How about the V G S of M1? What's the VGS of M1? Same, yeah, this too simple that you dare not to answer, right? Because they connect to the same node. How about VDS of IREF? But we, yeah, VDS of MREF is what? Vx minus zero, very good. Vd is Vx and Vs is zero, right? How about the Vds of this guy? Just call it Vd1, right? Very good, that is tricking you, it's not there. Just at Vd1. Do you know what is Vd1 when you design the circuit? You may or you may not, but you really don't know what is the low, right? Maybe the low came from you, but maybe the low has a variation in the operation condition. As a result, VD1 is going to change during the operation, right? So now let's look at the ratio of the current. I copy one divided by I ref. I claim that is equal to W on L M1 divided by W on L ref times 1 plus lambda Vd1 divided by 1 plus lambda Vx. Make sense? I just divide this equation by this one, right? Mu C all got cancel, Vgs minus Vt at the same Vx minus Vt, and that is the very idea, idea of copying the current, right? We deliberately make them to have the same gate voltage. So they got cancel. But the channel length modulation gives me some trouble, right? Which is okay. That is the problem. But if I can reduce the channel length modulation, this term lambda will be very small. This term will get canceled also. And now you see that why all the current mirror current source need to have very long channel. They don't use the smallest feature. Because the lambda is going to be large, then you cannot copy. Right? What do I mean? This one equals to W on L, M1 divided by W on L, ref, if no channel length modulation. The current ratio equals to the width to length ratio of these two transistors. Okay, so if my width is larger, then I actually can increase the current. If you just want to do a pure copying, which is possible, equal to one if same size. Okay, so do you see that if I make the two transistors the same size, I also increase their length so the channel length modulation is small, the two current will be exactly the same. Now, the good thing is what? If you change the temperature, the mobility might change. But both of them change in the same amount, right? So if this is a golden uh, reference, then I will still have the a constant current. I will still have a constant current. 
Of course, there are many things that is uh, hurting, uh, that make it not ideal, but uh, this is just a simple way we see in this class, okay? So let's do the current copy. So any questions? Uh, if no, I want to talk.